Hey everybody, welcome back to Bro Do It Yourself Condo Renovation Series number 9, I believe. It's done. So, I just haven't had time to get down here, and today I came down and wrapped it up. I think we left off at tunnels. I think we left off at tunnels. And uh, what I want to do is show you... Um, a little bit of monkeying around I had to do with tunnels for crying away because I didn't leave myself the space. Although I like the way this looks much better. It's just a lot of fiddle farting around with getting this thing right, you know, because you had to, there wasn't enough space for the collars. And uh, you had to put the end, the box ends in. I put RTV around them, waterproof them, uh, along with the uh, PVC uh, cement had to whittle down uh, everything to make it all fit right, but I'm glad. I got four inches in between. The thing looks really uniform. I like that. To that end, I had bought 27 feet of one odd, and uh, because I had envisioned taking runs in and out, runs in and out, and I used about, I don't even think I used half of it. Anyway, I've got a bunch of one odd left over that I will probably never use on anything. So, uh, you know, there's that. Maybe that's an eBay sale. Who knows? But I like the way this turned out. And yes, I did paint the, the lines because I wanted to keep the A and the B face separate for downstream use on motors and things like that. Whether it comes into play or not, I know that it comes into play when I hook up down there. But I want to know that my A face is red and my uh, B face is black. And to that end, I painted the white. Um, actually, I've got tape on here indicating which is what you're supposed to use. It just happens to be the same color red. Um, the white, I need to stick a little piece of the white tape on just to keep in the wrecks. And then I'll do that. I've got it over here. I'll just have it done. So this is my GE main. This is my Reliance generator subpanel. This is my Siemens box going out to a square D. So I've got every brand cover and none of the uh, breakers fit each other. So well done there. But that was because I didn't know what was going on. Before I knew what was uh, required of me by the uh, NEC regulations, I had bought this box for 125 amp service in my garage. And uh, um, I had planned to put it on the inside, which is an inside box. And come to find out that you need 36 inches in front and 30 inches side to side. Uh, clear, this is all going to go away. I'm going to double stack this later. So this will all be open. Uh, to that end, um, I didn't, wasn't willing to sacrifice my bowling alley workbench out there. Uh, so it was kind of killed the bird. Kill, uh, bird two, two birds with one stone. Sorry about that. Because I got a 10kW generator, which I was running my uh, plasma and my welder and my heater out there. With. Um, I'm gonna run the whole house with it now through this generator transfer box. So uh, that worked out well. Um, not only will I be able to run my appliances uh, or my uh, my water and stuff like that out there, um, but I'll be able to run the whole house if we have power fill. Uh, I like that idea. So, like I say, I work with a bunch of military guys, and they always said that overkill was the best kill. Let me tell you, this is overkill to the nth degree. I could have probably got away with number two gauge. Um, I think it carries 150 amps. All I'm doing is going from 125 to 125 to 125 to 125. This would probably easily carry 300 amps, if not more, maybe even 600, who knows. But uh, I won't have to worry about overheating. I have no resistance. So we've got a clear power path out to uh, the garage. Um, check my work here. Uh, this is what uh, I enjoy. The fact that the main is coming in, my switch for my main is out at the uh, at the bubble. Um, 
I don't have a disconnect down here. So this is my disconnect so far. This is my 125 amp which is going to feed. So it's 125 amp going through the whole system. That lightens lighten these. Which lightens these. It sends energy except not to here because I've got to set up for my generator on. Now hypothetically I'd have a my schedule 40 going out and um, I've got I've got six and eight gauge I'm thinking about just doubling those or I don't even know maybe I'll just take the six gauge out I don't I'm gonna work that out but anyway that's going to feed out to my generator which uh, I've got the uh, 50 amp RV line 50 amp uh, plug and I got this the other day put the amp receptacle which I'll have outside and uh, so I'm all set as far as energy from the generator goes once I run this line so I haven't determined whether I'm going to run it out right next to the main uh, utility or if I'm going to run it down outside my patio door where all this stuff is going out all that stuff's going to go away even the uh, the air combine when I reconfigure it's going to it probably had the same uh, egress but I'll probably run it in a different different way to make it look better anyway so it's hot hot cold because the generator is on now the generator is off there's no way to back feed into my generator it makes that hot sends 125 or 120 volt each one of these uh, phases and this is cold because this 125 is not on now each one of these phases is hot so I'm all set I'm ready to go to my sub panel I'm ready to uh, ready to drop my hot water heater over here I'm ready to drop everything I want to keep uh, in case of a power failure over here freezer refrigerator uh, not so much things like disposal or um, compact or any of that that stuff will all stay over here but I'm thinking about maybe Wi-Fi and lights and air handler and my air con here um, I'd hate to freeze in the winter having the capability to keep them warm so I'm gonna I'll move all that stuff here later, which is going to open up a lot of room in my main for things like heated floors uh, for my third floor, I'm going to change that all around in the master bedroom and probably have a sauna up there. So then I want a spa outside. So in any event, I'm really going to load up this 200 amp service. Um, we'll see how all well that works out. But for the interim, I've got uh, the capability I need to have power. So before it was all just a wish and dream and kind of like uh, thinking, yeah, one of these days I'm going to do it. And it started by the mistake of buying this wrong box. So I'm glad it all worked out the way it did. It took a lot of monkeying around to get this short line run. I'm telling you, that one out is no picnic for me. And uh, the tunnels work out really well. When it's covered up, it looks really professional. And... Uh, That'll always be like that. You know what I'm saying? I'll have the covers on and everything will be open and I have everything watertight. Now I can run my uh, my disconnects to my washer, to my dryer, to my freezer once I get this plenty of machine straightened out. I've got some other things to take care of first. So that'll be 10. I think 10 is going to be a little just a little expose on moving circuits because I got to change brains. Once I can't just take them out of GE and I'm going to have to change the wiring and the whole ding dang deal. So we'll take that one step at a time. I'm glad you came back and uh, I hope you come back and join me again. All right. Take care. You can do it. You can do it. Anybody can do this. But the disclaimer is, is I am not a professional and you shouldn't do this. If you have any kind of uh, questions about doing anything like this, you shouldn't be messing with it. To me, I figured it was just a 
wires, contact points, and voltage. Um, my problem is, was I got careless with the water. That one video where I just reached up and touched that little knob right there. After standing in the water and having all this electric around here, that could have been the end of uh, Bro Do It Yourself. Could have been the end of Bro Do It Yourself. If any of these contacts have been touched or misused, all you got to do is have a, uh, a wayward tape measure in, brush across a couple of, you know, you're, and you're done. Or everything I ever had that was even going to act like it was come close to this main because it was always live, I had it taped off on the end with electrical tape. To uh, You can see where I've got some leftover tape here. I've had the ends taped off. To uh, do away with the idea of uh, any kind of arcing or any kind of a uh, circuit. Um, so anyway, to that end, um, just be aware. You can do it, but you got to know what you're doing. And uh, there isn't anything to go in there and play around with. If you're, if you're new to electricity, read some books. Go watch a bunch of stuff. Take a class. You know, it never hurts to go learn about this kind of stuff. But the idea is, is it can be done. Um, the reason they don't want you to do it is because people get killed. And you know what? You could do it wrong and you could burn your house down. Or I'm in a condo. I could burn all 40s. You know, it could kill everybody in here except me. How would I be able to live with that? But I'm confident that this is done. It's done correctly. And I will have it uh, checked out. When I, and if it's wrong, I'll fix it. Whatever it takes to do it, you know. So right now the idea is to get electricity out to the garage while I'm redoing my deck and uh, we're going to do it come hell or high water and uh, we're ready for the uh, for the emergence of uh, any kind of debacle with the lines from the energy so I like the idea we have that uh, transfer box there it makes me feel really good so uh, anyway thanks for joining me and we'll check you again later.